Hey, you all, Carpet Bagger here, coming to you live from the West. More specifically, we are in Idaho Springs, Colorado. And uh, last night, I did hit a bit of wintry weather on uh, on the highway here. I think it's Highway 70 through Colorado. It did start to get very snowy. The visibility got very low. Fortunately, uh, my sister and her family live here in Colorado, and I was able to stop and uh, spend the evening with them. But now I am back up, heading east, trying to uh, trying to, to get east. I'm not making very good time, I admit, as I'm heading as I'm heading east, trying to trying to pick up the speed a little bit. But I still want to see some uh, fun things along the way. Now uh, here in Idaho Springs, Colorado, they have a statue, a statue of a man you may not have heard of before. And that man is Steve Canyon. You can see him standing there. He's got his pistol tucked away. His, 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 his stony gaze looking out forward. Now, uh, Steve, Can Steve Canyon, he was a, uh, a popular comic book figure in, uh, in the 1940s. A uh, comic book service man and uh, the the people of Idaho Springs after uh, after the World War II they decided they wanted to uh, have a patriotic name for this uh, valley they lived in and they changed the name of the valley to Steve Canyon named after Steve Canyon the uh, car the, uh, the comic book character here of course in modern times, uh, I, feel, I feel like a lot of people don't know who Steve Canyon is. I certainly, uh, certainly did not know myself. Uh, he was picked as a uh, representative of the armed forces as a way for them to uh, pay homage. So we do have a statue here of a fictional character that has been somewhat forgotten to time. So when I uh, saw this, I said to myself, this seems familiar. I feel like I've seen something similar to this. And uh, when I was traveling through Indiana, I believe it was sometime, I believe it was sometime last year, I came across another uh, forgotten comic hero. There was a statue of a boxer named Joe Palooka. And I'm like, this is very similar. There's two statues of two comic book heroes that are have been forgotten two time. And there's actually a connection here between uh, Steve Canyon and Joe Palooka. And actually, they, um, when the, the people of Indiana had the, had the Joe Palooka statue created, it was actually um, the Indiana Limestone Company that created that. Uh, someone saw that statue of Joe Palooka and actually inspired them to create this statue of Steve Canyon all the way out here in Colorado. So now we have two separate forgotten comic book heroes in statue form in uh, different parts of the country. Have any, okay, let me just put this guy. Has anyone heard of Steve Canyon? I'm gonna put that out there. If you have heard of Steve Canyon, leave a comment in, uh, in the comment section. Stopped off here in Golden, Colorado. Here we have the Buffalo Bill Museum. Of course, Buffalo Bill Cody, famous for the creation of the Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, a traveling show that featured, you know, trick horse riding, trick shooting, and all sorts of Wild West fun. Bang, bang. See the big mural of Wild Bill there here in the lobby. And over here by the restrooms have this massive sideshow banner here. It's when he performed for the Ringling Brothers in Barnum and Bailey Circus. You can see from there he says, let my show go on. You can see all the different trick riders there. Trick riders from different cultures 
and walks of life. And you can see these horses whipping about violently, people firing guns, stagecoaches. Check out that massive elk up there. And above the men's room, we have this big buffalo head. See the stained glass there, Buffalo Bill. Here's a quick biography of uh, Buffalo Bill. So he earned his name as a hunter for the railroad, so he would hunt buffalo. So he gained fame as an army scout and became legendary as a showman. It also says, I did not know this, it said he was advocated for equal rights for women and for his former Native American foes. So he introduced new showbiz techniques and founded communities. He supported preservation of the buffalo and originated the modern rodeo. So basically created the idea of what we see as a rodeo today. And even though he, uh, he killed a lot of buffaloes, he killed a lot of Native Americans in battle, he apparently later uh, tried to help both. This bench here is really cool. It's hand carved, has these little bears holding up the bench itself. This belonged to uh, Buffalo Bill. Some saddles uh, used here in the Wild West shows. Some of his history along here as well as some of his personal items. There's his Bowie knife there. It says this cane was given to him. It apparently was carved out of an old confederate flag uh, pole and said it was given to him as recognition uh, of, because of his support of Civil War veterans. It's a gun he used while he worked for the Pony Express. Apparently it's a legend that uh, Buffalo Bill actually helped exterminate the buffalo, almost leading them to extinction. But here it says he killed relatively few buffalo, mostly during 17 month period it says the near extinction of the buffalo happened after he was retired it's a big buffalo head uh, in that case as well here are some of the uh, medals he won uh, during the United States's war against the uh, Native Americans but after his uh, career killing buffalo and fighting Native Americans he became an actor it's kind of an interesting uh, shift in uh, careers. He talks about the creation of the Wild West shows. It says that Sitting Bull actually uh, performed in the shows. And uh, there is Sitting Bull's Peace Pipe right there. It says that this, uh, this lamp was given as a gift to one of his daughters which is interesting. <laughs> I don't know what my daughter would feel like if I gave her a giant purple lamp with my face painted on the side. Some of the items he actually used in the performance of the Wild West shows. You can see swords there. There is a whip. And there is a horse's bit uh, shaped like two guns. <laughs> guns on the horse's face says that this umbrella handle was made from his horse's leg. This horse Duke was one of his favorites. When the horse died, he turned his leg bone into an umbrella handle. Apparently, he had a tradition of turning his favorite, uh, favorite horses into uh, souvenirs. So this is from his uh, horse, Prince. When it died, he took its hoof and turned it into a paperweight with, uh, with his own face on it. Here's the outfit that Wild Bill himself would wear. It said he wore that hat in his last public public appearance. See so his uh, his horse's gear there. So little tiny shells in uh, the horse's bridle there. Here is a clay pigeon launcher for I guess for the trick shooting in his shows. This would uh, launch these clay discs into air into the air where the trick shooters could uh, blast them out of the sky. You can see all these different posters used to promote the Wild West show. Really colorful 
posters, a lot of action on them. Look, <laughs> see the labeled under under this guy. It doesn't say his name. It just says an Arab come to <laughs> Buffalo Bills Wild West show, and you can uh, you can see an Arab. Said, did Buffalo Bill visit? your town and you can actually look at these books and it has the dates where he had the wild west shows now in north carolina he didn't visit necessarily the town i live in but nearby he went to uh he went to asheville on uh, october 12th 1895 but this is really cool here the town i grew up in valparaiso indiana he actually visited in july 9th of 1909 it says adversary to advocate talks about how he uh, he uh, worked with Native Americans after originally fighting them for uh, the U.S. government. This is the headdress of Shore Bull, who was a uh, Native American that led a group called uh, the Ghost Dance against uh, against uh, the, the United States. But it says that uh, Buffalo Bill actually peti petitioned to allow Short Bull and his followers to get out of prison after the war and join the Wild West show. In the stereotype section, it talks about how uh, the Wild West shows were controversial and that they uh, displayed and perpetuated Native American customs when some people in the U.S. government actually wanted um, Wild Bill to stop promoting Native customs because they wanted the Indians to assimilate. And here we have, okay, you have to line up there to get the different uh, different Native American tribes there. It's the Mandan Buffalo Dancer there. And a, uh, let me put that together to create the Shawnee Native American. Firearms of the Wild West they have a variety of different guns. Guns, guns here. And, uh, it was a glass target ball. We saw the clay launcher there. That's a glass ball that'll be thrown and shot out of the sky. It's a board of bullets that will be used by a bullet company to sell bullets. It's a portrait of Annie Oakley, who was one of the female trick shooters in the show. Over here, you can dress up like a cowboy. They've got they've got the hats. They got the je the jean jackets, the cowboy boots, and even some chaps over here. Try on one of these one of these hats here. I don't know. What do you guys think? Does that what's what's a better look? That or or my 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 traditional my traditional hat there. I don't know. I, I kinda like the new one. Let's try that on again. There we go. That could hold. That could hold a lot of pins. That big hat right there. Then they have these mechanical horses here. It says all you have to do is pull the reins to make the horse move. Let's uh, let's give this a try. sized buffalo here in the museum and it says that while uh, Buffalo Bill did hunt buffalo professionally that when he had his Wild West show he actually bred them and had his own large herd of buffalo that would perform in the show. Here is a case full of Buffalo Bill merchandise and memorabilia. The 
Buffalo Bill boots there. It's the movie poster for Annie Get Your Gun. We have a Buffalo Bill tortilla chips and hot sauce there. Let's pen it here. Pen it for this actual memorial that we're currently at. There's some Buffalo Bill whiskey right there. Even a Buffalo Bill action figure from the legend. This is from the legend of the Lone Ranger there. Look at that cute little Buffalo Bill. And up here on a hill near the museum, we have the gravesite of Buffalo Bill where he was laid to rest. He is right there. And then next to him is his wife, Louisa Maud Cody. So there's actually some controversy here on uh, Buffalo Bill being buried here in uh, Colorado. He actually died here in, uh, in Denver. And uh, it says here that uh, his original will and testament was that he was supposed to be buried in Cody, Wyoming, which is the town that he himself founded. But uh, it says here that uh, while he was laying and uh, dying, he told his family that he wanted to be buried here on top of Lookout Mountain. And so he changed his will and testament to, so that he could be placed here. What's, uh, what's interesting is it even talks here about uh, there have been threats for people from Cody, Wyoming wanting to come and steal his body. And then I guess some people claim that that someone from Cody actually came and switched out the bodies before they were buried and that his body is actually buried in secret in Cody, Wyoming. Uh, this says several tons of concrete ensure that he stays exactly where he asked to be buried. So a very... Uh, very interesting. Yeah, they're telling you don't try to don't try to steal the body. It's buried under tons of concrete. It even says they're right on the grave. If you look closely at the very bottom, it says at rest here by his request. So they're doubling down that he wanted he wanted to be buried here. Now there is different variations of the story. There there's the story that is on uh on the, the plaque over there, but it also a lot of people say that the state of Colorado actually paid uh, Buffalo Bill's family. When he died here in Colorado, the state of Colorado wanted him buried here as a tourist attraction. He was such a big star, they knew that his grave would generate tourism dollars, so they paid his family a large amount of money if they promised to leave him here and bury him here in Colorado. So I guess it's, you know, it's, it, there's some mystery surrounding it. Is this really his grave? They say it absolutely is. It said on the other plaque that uh, they opened it right before it was buried and the family saw that it was him. But some people still swear that the body was switched and the real body is in Cody, Wyoming. It is interesting, his home of Cody, Wyoming, a, a town that he himself founded, a town that was essentially centered around him. They actually have um, a museum for him there as well. So uh, yeah, the, 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 the debate over Buffalo Bill's body. But I can definitely say, here on top of Lookout Mountain, where Buffalo Bill is buried, or is possibly buried, <laughs> they, uh, they have quite, quite a beautiful view. I did want to make a quick stop here in Lakewood, Colorado to check on the progress of this. Casa Bonita. It's a restaurant that's been closed since the pandemic. And I think they're supposed to open in May. This is one of the greatest restaurants in the world. They have, uh, it is cliff diving, gorilla shows, all sorts of fun stuff in there. But uh, that difficulty reopening after the pandemic, and it was bought, uh, purchased by Matt Stone and Trey Parker, the creators of South Park, who are going planning on reopening it soon, hopefully. So I just wanted to come out and see um, how it was looking. And it looks, I don't know, to me it looks like they have painted the outside. It looks way pinker than the last time I was here. It, it looks good. And as I peek through the fence here, 
I can see where they've taped off around the doors for the painting, so that is indeed a new fresh coat of paint, and like I said, it looks wonderful. There is water in the fountain. It's not, uh, the fountain's not operating or not spraying water in the air, but it is filled with water. There is uh, bits of construction material around the front door. There's a ladder there. So yeah, looks like they're, or the lights are on in the building. So yeah, looks like they're hard at work uh, getting it ready. Hopefully I will be able to come back and visit it uh, not long after uh, it opens. Yeah, that wonderful tower there. It's so fun, the, the, the grandeur of Casa Bonita and it sits in like yeah, a strip mall. And not far from Casa Bonita, we have a random art car sighting here. See, it's got some uh, horns there on its head. And on uh, the front, we got some various objects, baby blocks. It's like a big nest with baby arms reaching out and a butterfly made out of broken plastic Easter eggs. And this Jeep here has uh, a bunch of little toys there on the hood. There's more toys up here. Some uh, creepy baby heads as well. All right, come down here to downtown Denver, Colorado. I do like to check out the local selfie museums whenever I'm in a city, so I figured today we check out the Denver Selfie Museum. All right, looks like we have to head downstairs here to the Selfie Museum. Ah, uh, there we go. All right, so we can kind of take in some of the, uh, some of the scenes here. We've got the ring lights there set up so you can uh, put your cell phone there. And of course, you have to put up uh, warnings. You gotta tell people, do not climb on the machines. I can just imagine someone uh, scaling the gumball machines like some sort of crazy gorilla. See over here, a very fuzzy, very fuzzy wall there. You can run your fingers through. And uh, we got some old rotary phones here. I think one thing I do miss the most out of all modern technology is that good old fashioned solid phone there that's actually shaped like a phone. Hello? Obviously, it's, it's, I think it's awkward like the way you hold a cell phone to your ear. This feels, this feels more natural. This feels right. It says fudge your bad vibes. The rules here, do not hang on the bag. It says and please punch the bag lightly. All right, we gotta get our knuckle sandwiches ready. And uh, we can only hit the bag lightly. We can't, we can't, just, we can't lay into it. It's, it's, the bag can't handle being just punched full force all day, every day. So I think that's good. I think that's. Oh, I, I don't know. Swinging there. Didn't want. I didn't want. I didn't want. To, I didn't want to damage the bag with my my powerful fists. This photo op says I can't control myself. That may not be entirely accurate. So right now I really I really feel like I can indeed uh, control myself I'm not totally out of, I've been out of control at certain points in my life but currently not uh, not out of control I see a wall of VHS tapes there with with hearts on it there's a secret room here do not touch the mirrors do not stack or drop the orbs limit your stay to three minutes so let's see what were the rules I close the door there. Oh, the door's a mirror. I was gonna, we're not supposed to touch the mirrors, so you can, uh, don't touch the mirrors. Don't, uh, I think just don't be rough with the stuff. I think we're allowed to sit maybe in this chair here. I think we're supposed to be very gentle with the orbs here. No, uh, you know, no violent craziness. Here, just some gentle time here with these orbs. Yeah, it's kind of like a one room hall of mirrors here you can see the other me's reflected there get in the corner there see the other me's there we use the orbs to light up our faces 
All right, now we're talking. No selfie museum is complete without a, uh, without a bathtub photo op here. You got some rubber duckies as well. The bubbles, the bubbles right here. And uh, rubber ducky in here. And then you gotta like, you gotta playfully throw the bubbles in the air. What is, I always wondered, what, the, what, is, what does a rubber ducky do? People, people talk about it as if it is some sort of tool that you use while bathing, but I uh, never understood. What do you do with rubber ducky? Is it just for funsies or does it serve some greater purpose? a laundry scene here and you were just telling me that the gentleman that, 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 that runs this place said that the photo op is that you, that you climb inside you want to see a large chubby man trying to climb inside of this office? you're gonna get in there you're gonna have to get me out okay? <laughs> it's getting serious all right yeah you don't want to get like impaled by your keys while you're oh. yeah, yeah i think that's the best way you gotta you gotta so, back into it is like touching the back of my head <laughs> I think oh, I'm done. you gotta get both legs in there. I'm not. Uh, All right. Well, I'll, I'll, let, let me give it a shot. The guy said that people get in this. Maybe, maybe head first. But that thing started. I put my hand on it. That thing started spinning. See, it's dead still. I think the only, I was gonna say maybe you could put small children in here, but I would never tell people to put small children in a, in a, in a dryer. It's like a pink room in here. Have a, uh, what do you call these? What do you call these places where you sit and like do your makeup it's and your hair? It's a vanity? It's a vanity. It's a vanity there where you can sit and uh, do your makeup, shave, whatever. Oh, we actually have a pink, uh, a pink TV in here. One of those uh, wooden TVs and a pink guitar on the wall. And then there is uh, these frames here, but they don't have pictures in them. They just have solid, uh, solid pink within the frames. So I don't know. It's interesting. Just imagine, uh, I guess you use your imagination what you think might be in these picture frames. All right, so we got our classic angel pose there. Sorry. Got our microphones so we can sing about, uh, about some angels. Is that surely your angel, darling? You touched my cheek before you leave. Angel, you are my angel of the morning, baby. Just touch my cheek before you leave. Also, there's a big, big axolotl right there. Axolotl of the morning, baby. Just touch my gills before you leave. Ooh, hidden Mickey. Some sort of banana paste swinging room here. This here says Joe Palick. I don't know who Joe Palick is. Uh, if you know who Joe Palick is, leave a comment in the comment section. We have some very interesting black and white drawings in here with these big, big crayons. All right, not much color in here. Let's uh, let's get to coloring. Eager, 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 eager. All right, give me a little, little purple. Eager, 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 eager. Masterpiece. 
we saw the white angel wing props. They have the, uh, the black angel wings, if that's what you prefer. And also some fuzzy backgrounds here. This one has a popsicle. And did you know, I just found this out like the other day, popsicle is a trademark term like Kleenex. You can't just, uh, the popsicle is a brand name, not just a name to describe all frozen desserts with a stick in them. And over here, we got a nice, uh, nice peach there on this orange background. Oh, this is kind of random. This is a bear carved out of a stump and it's got uh, all these different colors. I don't know if this chain carved with a chainsaw or whatnot. It's this giant strawberry here and some oversized fruit slices. It's not like a grapefruit right there. Kiwi. The sign here says Mile High Club. I think that is the uh, that is that is the club that you officially join once you have visited the city of Denver. See the donut wall there, all the different flavors of donut. I'm not sure that was that's got like apricot chunks on it. And this rainbow donut here, I'm not sure how that uh, would taste. Oh, and they do have some yellow angel wings as well. So you have a wide variety of what uh, different angel wings you'd like to uh, like to wear. Oh, look at this on the floor. There is a portal to some foreign uh, foreign dimension. We have the Mona Lisa selfie there. Underneath Mona Lisa, we have some some uh, some very very intense math equation. If you can solve this math equation, <laughs> leave the answer in uh, the uh, comment section. We're gonna grab some dinner here at Snarf's Sandwich. Apparently this is a Denver chain of sandwiches. We'll give this a try. You can see that sign there it is very interesting. Those very strange characters there. Are you ready for the smells? I'm ready. Are you ready? No, they're free. They're free. The smells are free to me. Are you getting that? Are you getting that at home? I... Oh yeah, look at that mural on the wall there. I love the I love those weird characters there on the uh, on the logo. Eating some sandwiches there with their eyes floating in the air. And there's the characters there in the tile work as well. See, that's actually a 3D a 3D sandwich right there. Alright on this menu here the stuff that's not on the menu I'm gonna get the big fat snarf. It's a little corned beef and pastrami. All right, here's my big, big snarf here. See if I can get it open. Oh, let's see. It's hiding under all this wrapping somewhere. Did you kill a tree for a sandwich? And there it is, the big, the big snarf. Got the corned beef and pastrami in it. I'm gonna give this a try. Oh, oh, falling apart. Here, let's put it back together now. Right, so you got the big snarf there. It does got some lettuce and mayonnaise inside. Let's give this a try. Mm. That is really tasty. Mm. There's some good corned beef and pastrami there. They do have some really strange paintings here. It's like the Avengers in the kitchen. Up there, there's Darth Vader and uh, Boba Fett sharing a milkshake. But possibly the strangest one is uh, Batman on the toilet drinking wine. So thank you for joining me today as we travel through Colorado. I would love to stay in Denver. There are some other things, there's some things in Denver I definitely want to check out, but um, we're gonna have to maybe come back to Denver. I want to come back and, and visit when uh, when Casa Bonita is open. We'll maybe return here at a later point in the year. Hopefully, we'll see, we'll see uh, where the wind takes us. But now I gotta keep heading east. I've got to, uh, Got it. You've got to make it back home. Got to make it back home before WrestleMania. That's that's the goal here. So uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start driving east tonight. Drive a little bit and see uh, see if, see if I can find a stopping point, and then uh, we'll keep heading that direction. And thank you guys so much for for following me on this this journey. It's been this year has been has been a crazy adventure so far and, and it means so much that uh that you guys are out there watching this and uh and showing me support it means the absolute world to me 
Um, thank you so much. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also, selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. And I really want to get some more pins. I need to contact uh, the appropriate people to, to get some uh, pins, some, maybe some new pins in uh, the pin shop. But, but just stay tuned on that. I'm not sure. I don't have a, a time frame yet on when that's going to happen. Uh, and also, I'm doing cameos. So uh, if you want a personalized message, uh, a greeting, or a uh, birthday wishes, anniversary wishes, or just a fun message from me. I'm doing that now. The, the link is in the description of this video. And of course, all that goes to help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Till next time, my friends. This one's in the bag.